do for this video today I'm actually doing a cake again I'm just making sure everything is turned on and set up and we can get started okay whoo <laughs> So I want to, first I want to apologize for missing last week. We had some changes in my uh, custody situation with my kids. And so last week just didn't work out, but I'm so excited to be back this week. And we're making one of my all time favorites. And that is my uh, Lego head cake. The Lego head cake is super easy to make. And I think you guys are really gonna like it. So let me make sure I have all of the comments and stuff set up so that I can respond to everybody. And um, we can get started. So uh, let me know if you're on Catherine, Mandy, Katrina. It's nice to see you guys. Hi. And um, I am still missing the Facebook comments. So uh, give me just a second. I don't know why they won't like to be like, now you're live and make it easy to find. <laughs> it's never fun. Um, there we go. All right, and I am seeing comments over there too. So yay, if you are joining us for the first, joining us, joining me for the first time, let me know, leave me a comment, let me know uh, where you're watching from and uh, yeah, what kind of things you enjoy. So to get started, I, uh, I've made this cake a ton of times. The first time I made it, I made it with eight inch cakes, uh, but because a Lego head is the same width as it is height, <laughs> Uh, eight inches this way, eight inches this way. So it was a lot of cake. So I ended up switching and now I do six inch cakes. So I made a small batch of my chocolate cake, which I've already done a video of. It's on my blog. It's easy to find. It is amazing. It's rich. It's dense. It's decadent. It's delicious. And because it's a nice dense cake, it's really good for carving. Uh, this is actually the base of any cake that I carve. In fact, this is pretty much the base of 99% of my cakes. Uh, unless a client recommends or requests something different, this is definitely my go-to. So I actually have three of these, uh, all six inch cakes. Uh, at first I just made two, but as you can see, these two together were not as tall as they were wide. So really quickly, actually, I found another one in my freezer, so I didn't have to make another one, uh, but all three of these stacked together are a little on the tall side now, right? Now it's definitely taller than it is wide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one that I found in the freezer and we're gonna cut it down until we are happy with, uh, with the height. So you'll notice that these are all wrapped in plastic wrap. So I actually have a whole video on this uh, and a post on my blog all about this, but I actually like to take my cakes out of the oven. I let them sit for about 10 minutes till they're just, they're still warm, but I can like touch them without totally giving myself third degree burns. Uh, and then I immediately wrap them in plastic and put them in the freezer. And the reason I do that is then instead of all that steam leaving the cakes, which is moisture, leaving the cakes, uh, it all gets trapped inside the cakes. Now I never refrigerate cakes, I only freeze them or leave them on the counters because freezing completely stops the process. Leaving them on the counter is nice and they will, uh, they will get dry out at a normal rate. But if you put cakes in the fridge, it doesn't stop the process entirely like freezing does. So it's going to continue to dry out your cake uh, like faster than it would on the counter. And you end up with a really dry cake really fast. So unless I have to refrigerate it because it like has a cheesecake filling in the center, I, um, I like to leave cakes on the counter. All right, so now I, hmm. I am trying to decide. I should have brought my ruler down, but it's like way up there. Mm, I'm gonna eyeball this. I think I just want like maybe another, I think I'm just gonna cut this in half and see if that's a good height. So uh, what I like to do for cake cutting is I have this really long, uh, I wanna say this is like nine to 10 inches serrated knife and it's nice and sharp and I like it because it doesn't bend the way so many long knives do. This is definitely by far my favorite. And I, oh, don't that in there. Uh, I hold it against the cake where I want it. This is a turntable, my favorite one. It's a nice heavy duty one. Hold it where I want to cut the cake and, uh, and then I just turn the cake while holding the knife in place. And then that way, I'm giving myself a line that goes all the way around the cake. And then as I get back to the beginning, I can see that the line matches up. So I know I'm holding it nice and straight. 
and I'm gonna just keep turning it. This time though, I'm gonna be cutting into the cake and letting the turntable do the work for me. Now, I carve my cakes frozen. Uh, now, if I'm gonna be leveling a cake like this, I usually let it thaw all the way, but I, um, honestly, I forgot to take it out of the oven. <laughs> of the oven. I meant freezer, I forgot to take it out of the freezer. So, uh, so we're kind of fighting some inner freezing here. <laughs> but we are gonna get through it. So while I'm doing this, are there any questions? All right, uh, hello from Michigan, hello from PA, hello from Ohio. Hi guys, uh, Rocky J, first time viewer, nice to see you. Ashley, love my hair, it looks so pretty. Oh, well thank you so much. I'm actually doing my hair again on Friday, so if anybody has any new color suggestions, let me know. I change color about every six weeks, but I tend to stick in like the purple and blue ranges. Uh, Karina, first time here watching. You love dense cake. I'm so glad. Uh, North Central, North Dakota. Nice. All right. So there we go. And nice and level. Now it looks, I've gotten some comments of some of my other cake videos where people have commented that once I start carving, it looks really dry. Um, and that's just because it's frozen. Like it's super hard. Um, but it's actually a really moist cake. You just want to carve it frozen so you don't end up getting crumbs. It helps hold the cake together better this way. All right, so uh, next we're going to glue the cake together. And what we're gonna do that with is with some ganache. Now ganache is basically cake glue. It's the center of a truffle. It's uh, cream, uh, cream that you bring to a simmer and then add it to some high quality chocolate. And it's rich, it's luscious. And depending on the ratio that you use, uh, you can use it for a lot of different things. So I use it for truffles, I use it for frosting, I use it for a ganache strip around the outside of a cake. Tons of different uses for this. Okay, so I'm gonna unwrap my other cake. Now, because the Lego shape is rounded along the top and the bottom, um, Instead of putting a nice flat bottom on the bottom of the cake, I'm actually gonna flip it over and use this side because we're gonna cut away this corner and it's gonna become our rounded bottom. So I'm flipping the first one upside down and you'll notice I, uh, I bake my cake with parchment circles on the bottom. So first thing I wanna do is take off that parchment circle. And then I have, so this is a six inch cake. So I have a four inch cake circle and I'm going to, add some ganache to it. Uh, when I, One of my favorite cake videos that I did was a couple years ago when the um, men try came to my house. I'm gonna put this right here in the center. Make sure it's centered. Uh, and we made, um, hmm. so I'm actually gonna trim a little bit of this off just so I give myself a wide enough surface to work on. That was a little bit a little bit too narrow where it bubbled up right there. Okay. Uh, anyway, so we carved cakes and by the end of the carving session, they were as in love with ganache as I am. And we kept saying uh, the answer to all of life's question was ganache. Cause we'd be like, it's a little, it's a little dry, ganache it. There's a little break here, ganache it. So ever since then ganache has become this totally different term in my house. Okay, so we've flipped that base over and now I'm going to take that layer that we just trimmed Take the parchment circle off that. Add some more ganache. And we're not making this super, super thick because what we're wanting this to do is become glue and hold this together. And because these cakes are frozen, the chocolate's actually gonna set really fast. So I'm trying to work fairly quickly. There we go. And now just for, I'm gonna look at this again. Okay, so it seems like, I should have thought of this, it's a little bit tall still, even with that middle layer being so thin, right? Actually, actually it's not bad now that I look at it on the screen. I think I'm gonna stick with it, okay. You can always carve away more, can't carve away less. Okay, so same thing, I'm now going to unwrap this layer of cake and we're gonna stack it. Are we gonna start carving? Best part. One of the reasons I like cake carving is um, just because most cake decorators don't do it. And so it's just, it's just kind of a fun, fun thing, but it's easier than you think. And it's a great way to make unique shapes within your cake. All right, so we're gonna go back and ganache this one again. 
begin working fairly quickly simply because um, this is going to set really fast with these frozen cake layers. So make it thick enough that it's going to hold it together, but not too thick. Okay, and attach that. Okay, turn it around and make sure as you're, um, as you're looking at it that everything is centered because once this chocolate is set, you will not be able to move this at all. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna do really quickly before we start carving is I'm actually just gonna um, make sure that the cracks where the cakes are meeting are all filled with this ganache and that I don't have too much of it like sticking out creating uh, what will later be like a, a line in the fondant work that we put over the top. So again, I'm not trying to go too thick this time around. I'm just trying to fill that crack. So just to scrape it off and make sure it's nice and flat. All right, there we go. So now begins uh, the carving. So Lego heads are rounded at the top and the bottom. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna take off at like a 45 degree angle this whole outer edge and then see what I think about it. All right, there we go. So then, oops, holding this up, we can see is this rounded enough? Is this giving us the shape that we want? And I actually think I'm going to I think I like that. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna flip it upside down and we're gonna do the same thing on this uh, bottom corner. All right. So again, bring this knife in and try not to cut. In fact, I'm gonna move this for just a second. Oh, I can take it off. See how that chocolate has already um, gotten firm and set? I don't want to cut into that board. So I'm going to do the same thing, like a 45 degree angle around the whole outside of this cake. And meet at the front. Okay, so now that we're done with that first cut, see how we still have some kind of sharp edges here? So now we come in for the fine tuning. We just kind of cut that area between the side and that 45 degree cut and smooth it out. Same thing along the top. Make sure you don't cut too much of the top just because that is our base. This is actually the bottom, not the top, right? And if you cut too much, um, you won't have enough room for that four inch bottom that we've already cut. All right. And you can see how even though I'm still getting like some crumbs as I cut away, it's not nearly as bad as it would be if this cake was thawed. So I'm going to re-ganache my uh, four inch cake circle, get it nice and fresh and attach that back to the bottom. All right, so while this is upside down, this is actually a great time to frost the bottom too because sometimes these bottom uh, edges can be hard to get when the cake is upright. I do the same thing, the same technique when I'm frosting a ball shape. I'll, um, I'll turn it upside down and I'll frost the bottom first and then I'll work on the top after that. It makes it a lot easier to get a nice smooth frosting around the whole cake. And notice I'm going, I don't know if you can see, hold on, I'll move this. I'm going all the way to the edge of the cake plate because the cake plate is actually gonna be the bottom of our head, right? So we want this to be a nice smooth transition all the way around. So we don't want any bumps, we don't want any holes. I'm gonna make sure this is all filled. So first I do this angle and then I'm gonna kind of bring it around and help curve that. There we go. And make sure it's nice and rounded. Add more if you need it. And while I'm frosting, now's a good time to try to catch up on some comments as well. Uh, you love your work. Thank you for sharing from Kiss Me, Florida. Oh, that's one of my favorite places in the world. I love Disney World. It's the best. Um, I wish I could live there. In fact, last time we were there, I told the kids, I'm like, because for my job, we can live anywhere in the world we want. Wouldn't it be fun to live here? And they, um, half of them are like, yes. And half of them are like, no. Uh, the one who said, the main one who said no, it's just because she wanted to finish the school year here, though. I don't think she understood that I would like 
It wouldn't be an immediate thing, but my plan is to retire there someday and be one of those cute little old greeters at the parks. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, Charlene, why are you, what are you doing this cake? Oh, great question. For those of us who have just joined us, this is going to be a Lego head. So right now the cake is upside down. This is a six inch cake with three layers and it's about six inches tall. And I have, uh, uh, I've, I've cut away and carved the bottom of the cake to be rounded the way a Lego head will be rounded. All right, so now I'm frosting this and you can see how the chocolate, the ganache, the frosting is already getting dull. That's because the cakes are frozen when I carve them. So we're already getting uh, the chocolate to set, which is really great. Okay, so now we're going to flip the cake back around again. So first I'm gonna get rid of all these crumbs that I have all over the place and Fun part about ganache is a huge mess. So let's see. trying to get a little baggie out to put the cake pieces in because one of the fun things about cake carving is that there's lots of little cake pieces that you can eat while you're working on the cake. And then I can eat plenty of cake and fill up on cake actually, depending on how much you're carving away um, before I even serve the cake. So then when your guests are like, aren't you gonna eat some? And you're like, no, I'm good. To be fair, I always eat another slice as well. I'm never not gonna eat cake, right? All right, so we're gonna take this cake. Oh, it's sticking to the thing. Okay, so we have carved and frosted the bottom and we have the cake board right here. So I'm gonna flip it back over. So now it's right side up again. And now I'm gonna clean up the carving on this top side and frost this top side, just like you did to the bottom, except I'm also gonna frost all the way to the top. So put this back on the turntable and finish this up. So the ganache that I'm using is made of a couple different kinds of chocolate. I like to use a mix of chocolate so then my ganache doesn't taste like, oops, ha, huh, I forgot to clean up the carving. Let's, we'll just kind of scrape that off a little bit. Got ahead of myself. All right, so this corner right here between this 45 degree angle cut and the side is still a little um, a little harsh. So I'm just gonna soften that up now. And it doesn't take much, so don't over cut or over carve your cake when you do this. We're really just trying to take away that edge so that nobody will notice where it is. All right, see, that's, that's really good. Check and see if you have any other spots that maybe need to be trimmed. And now, now we're gonna add the ganache and frost it. And remember, because these cakes are frozen, the ganache is gonna set pretty quickly, so you wanna work fairly fast. All right, so like I was saying, this ganache is uh, two parts chocolate, uh, one, part, uh, one part cream, and I like to mix my chocolates. So this is a mix of like Calibit and Ghirardelli's and Merkins. Um, and the reason that I do that is because uh, I don't want to. I don't want the ganache to taste like any one thing. If you used all Ghirardelli, then your uh, then your ganache would just taste like Ghirardelli chocolate. And I kind of like creating my own blend so that it doesn't have like a definitive flavor. So it's not quite so. Oh my word! I, I know this flavor. This is that. So uh, personal preference. If you have one chocolate that you really really love and you want it to taste like that, then do that. Do 100% of whatever chocolate it is that you like. So keep working your way around. And remember, we want the sides to be nice and straight because Lego head sides are nice and straight. And we want the top to be uh, nice and flat because Lego head tops are nice and flat. So just, we only want those outer corners to be rounded. So keep that in mind as you are frosting this because however you frost it is, um, is gonna be what the fondant shapes itself like on this cake. Right, I'm gonna go over one more time, make, just making sure I don't have like any, like right here. I don't know if you can see, it has kind of like a little divot right here. So I'm gonna fill it in with some ganache. Man, this ganache is getting hard fast. I'm gonna fill in this right here and smooth it out. There, now I don't have a divot anymore. All right, so I have nice straight sides, have a nice flat top, and nice and rounded cake. So 
Let's take a look at this. And I'm gonna clean my hands first because they're covered in melty chocolate. I will say when I am working with ganache, I probably wash my hands like every two seconds, I swear. Okay. Okay, so you want dry hands. Our ganache has already started to set, but now that it's set, I can easily uh, pick it up and see I'm not like getting too much chocolate everywhere. Once it sets completely, it'll be even better. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and we're gonna work on some of our details while this chocolate finishes setting. But you can see our Lego head shape now, right? The rounded bottoms, the rounded tops. What do you think? Is it looking good so far? Okay. Um, one of my tricks for, um, for placing a cake like on a counter, I'm gonna put this over on the counter, but I wanna easily be able to pick it up later. So I'm actually gonna set it on top of this frosting spatula like that. So I'll be able to kind of lift up the edge and get a really good grip later. Oh, I just tripped on my microphone cord. I'm a dork. <laughs> Seriously, that was elegant. Wash my hands again. And also get a rag because we want to wash our work surface now. We want to get rid of all of those crumbs and chocolate that are all over the place. Before you, every time that you change something in cake decorating, especially before starting to work with fondant, you want to make sure you clean your work surface really good. In fact, because ganache tends to spread, even just like touching the handle of this will get chocolate on my hands and I could get on the fondant. I'm gonna move this out of my way too so I don't accidentally grab it. So if you can see, my work surface is kind of a, whoop, <laughs> there we go. Oh, that still didn't work. <laughs> kind of a mess. So I'm gonna quickly move everything out of the way. And I already put my mat down, my fondant mat. So this should actually wipe up really easily. Oops. So I'm gonna catch up on some questions. This is the part of baking and cooking. You uh, they have added a taste of the products you're making. You gotta make sure it's good, right? Yes, you do. You have to taste test while you're cooking. That's a big part of cooking for sure, is constantly tasting. That's why they call them tasting spoons. Little itty bitty spoons. You can constantly be tasting what you're eating. And I think that applies to cakes as well, for sure. I mean, you wouldn't want to serve a cake to someone and turn out that you had like accidentally used um, salt instead of sugar or anything like that, right? I've done that before. All right, one more wipe down. That chocolate just really spreads. Okay. And you just really don't want to risk get to turning your yellow fondant brown because you've added chocolate on accident. So make sure you wipe it really good. And then Wipe it again, right? Wipe it really good and then wipe it again. Okay, I'm gonna dry it now. And then I'm gonna grease it. <laughs> Cause when you're working with fondant, um, some people, the cake decorators are kind of split on what they like. A lot like to use um, powdered sugar cornstarch mixture, but I find that that just dries up my fondant more. So I personally uh, like using a uh, shortening. So I'm gonna take some shortening and I'm gonna spread it um, all over my work surface, rub it between my hands, and then just kind of spread it everywhere. And then this way I'll be able to roll out fondant and um, it will stick to the mat and it'll be much easier to roll it out without everything slipping and sliding everywhere with that nice thin layer on there. So there is that. So the aspects that I wanna make for the head now, the other detail work is uh, the neck and the little peg on top of his head. So I've taken, uh, so the peg on the top of their head is actually smaller than their neck peg because you can actually stack all the heads. The neck is actually like a, a divot, like it goes in and it can fit on top of the peg that's on the top of the other heads. So for my top one, I have cut out three three inch cake circles, cardboard circles. I have stacked them together and I have wrapped them in foil and put tape on the back. Um, and then I have for the neck, I have four four inch circles. So I'm actually gonna show you how I do that with this. So I'm gonna take some foil 
like this. I'm going to take my cake circles that I've cut, are all four inches ish. I'm going to put that right there in the middle. And I'm just going to pull the sides up first. I'm not going to worry about wrapping it all the way. I'm just going to pull the sides up. Make sure to hold this in place. Because what I really need is those sides, and then I grab it and wrap it around. What I'm looking for is for those sides to be nice and clean so they get nice and sharp, right? All right. And now I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut away this excess. So I'm going to leave about like a half inch gap around the outside. And this is how I prepare all my cake boards. Um, this one just has an extra height that we're going to use to create that neck and head. And then I'm going to, I couldn't find my tape, so I'm using my daughter's tape. You can tell because she's obsessed with cats. This is a cat tape thing. And we're gonna tape these ends uh, down nice and tight. Now you could, um, you could make the little head divot and the neck out of more cake, but there's such a short amount that that would actually be really, really difficult to work with. And um, my hands are greasy, so the tape's not sticking very good. Should have washed them again. Um, and, uh, and so for me, it was just easier to get, you know, a little half inch out of cardboard circles. Um, but that's kind of up to you, uh, what you want to do. If you do want to make those out of cake, it just becomes hard. Because think of this as a cake and then putting that whole cake on top of this. It's going to be hard to make it the strength that you need. And you could easily cause some issues with the cake collapsing in itself. Nobody wants that. Um, cake collapsing is always bad news. Okay, so now this is prepared and ready to go as well. So I have two, I have my three inch and my four inch. So next up um, is rolling out some fondant. It was the one thing I forgot to grab. <laughs> only, only mildly important to this cake, the fondant, I'm just saying. All right. Um, to go grab some. I'm going to unplug my microphone so you might not be able to hear me for a second. Oops. Wrong plug. Don't let me forget to plug this back in. Okay. Okay, I just bought a brand new container of yellow fondant, so I knew it was over there. I just didn't have it like right here in my hands. Um, so one of the complaints that I get a lot about people working with fondant is where it's like, I tried it and I hated it. So it's a matter of finding the fondant that like works for you. So I've tried like the fondant brand that's easily accessible at craft stores. In fact, that's how I started. I used to take those classes, then I used to teach those classes. Um, I really didn't like that fondant. I felt like it was super dry. Now, before anybody asks, I have not tried the new recipe for it. I know it's been changed in the last couple of years, uh, but that's just because I found a brand that I did really like. Um, so I like uh, Satin Ice, not sponsored. I just really like them. Um, and I've also tried Fat Daddy-O's uh, fondant, and I really like that one too. So if, um, I can just get this in a nice big size. So um, I always, I use a lot of fondant. So when it comes, um, you open it up. This is all stuck down in there. And it actually should smell like vanilla because this is vanilla flavored fondant. People complain a lot about fondant. Um, and you can like scoop it out with a spoon if you want. I mean, it's hard, right? But um, the easiest way that I find, especially when I'm working with a decent amount of this stuff, like I'm going to today, is I actually pull this plastic down and I take a knife. And I'm just going to cut like a bunch off about the size that I feel like I'm going to use. In fact, I know I'm going to use more than this, but this is just what we're going to start with. And then you want to keep this fresh. This can actually last a really long time if you keep it fresh. So try to get all the air out that you can. Twist this again. I'm going to put it back 
in here. I'm going to tuck that down on the side to keep it as closed as possible and put this lid on. And this lid is really good. Make sure you pop it all the way into place. And this will actually stay really good for quite a while. So in the meantime, I'm going to take this and add some more shortening to my hands. Um, and I'm gonna need this for a while. My hands are nice and warm, so they're gonna warm up this fondant and the um, shortenings. You don't use too much because that will actually soften it too much, but you just wanna add enough shortening that it's not sticking to your hands and you can easily uh, play with this. And look how quickly this is kneading and coming together. All right, so this half is done. And now I'm going to use the other half. The reason I didn't do it all at once is because that's just a lot for your hands. So try to keep it in workable amounts and then you can, it'll be easier to knead together once they're both soft and kneaded than right now when this one's, if they were both hard, that's a big amount. Um, okay, so Margaret, you recommend your sites as a fellow, to a fellow baker. She wanted to start using uh, fondant. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, what's the brand of fondant? Satin Ice. Uh, you're not good at working with big pieces of fondant and cracks and sticks. It might be the brand. So just because like I recommended this brand to another baker and she used it and she had gotten so used to a dryer fondant that she felt that this one was super sticky and she didn't like using it. Uh, and then I know some bakers like to mix the drier brand of the old style of fondant with marshmallow fondant and then they find that they meet in the middle and they really like that. It's more like thick texture at the end of the day. But personally, I don't have a ton of time and I'd rather just buy it ready to use. Um, and honestly, I'm not a fan of marshmallow fondant. I know a lot of people are, but to me, a big, huge, thick wad on your cake is a big, thick wad on your cake. And whether it's fondant or whether it's marshmallow fondant, I'm still gonna peel it off and eat the cake and the frosting and um, not, I mean, I don't even like gum. Why would I eat this? You know what I mean? So my kids love this, like adore it. They would just eat that tube in a day if I let them. Um, you can actually add flavoring to this as well. Like I said, this comes vanilla flavored. It actually smells okay. Um, and you can take like flavoring oils and add it to this and knead it in and you can create flavor profiles that way. I like to use almond um, because I feel like it uh, complements the chocolate really well. Um, but most of the time I just don't bother because kids don't care about the flavor and adults always peel it off. So why waste my time? Um, but that's just my personal like fondant issues <laughs> or fondant. You can always say fondant. Um, when I was on Food Network, uh, bon Ron Ben Israel, I always said fondant. But to be fair, he's French, so he's allowed to make food sound snootier, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a West Coast girl, but to me it's just fondant. All right, so now I've kneaded both pieces together, and now we're going to start by rolling some out. So because I'm only gonna be covering these two circles right now, I don't need this massive amount, so I'm actually gonna cut it in half. And I'm not just gonna set this other half aside though. What I'm gonna do is take some plastic wrap. I am gonna use it today, so it's okay that it, it doesn't need to be like sealed in the box, but I'm gonna wrap it in a couple layer of plastic wrap to keep it to the side so that it doesn't dry out while I'm working with this part. Uh, that's the thing about fondant, you just wanna keep it as protected as possible when you're not kneading it or working with it or have your hands on it. Okay, so I have my plastic fondant sheet down. I have a plastic rolling pin. And the reason I recommend a plastic rolling pin, I have shortening, I'm gonna to add to the rolling pin. You wanna use a plastic rolling pin because if you use a wood rolling pin, you'll actually get wood grain marks in your fondant, which you do not want. Okay. I just want to start rolling out. Now, if you have any, oh, ganache, if you have any crumbs of anything on your rolling pin, of course, they will get on your fondant. Like, look at this. It's been two seconds and I already have a couple little ganache powder marks on here. So I'm just going to, because we're just starting, it's not a big deal, I'm just going to cut those away. Ugh, and be more careful next time. Oh, one on the back. Okay, so again, this is why you wanna make sure everything is clean as clean can be. Uh, now, you can rotate the whole mat or you can just pick up your fondant and rotate it, but you wanna make sure that you're rotating constantly. We all have 
that area that's going to be thinner. Like if I just left this in place, this area right here is always going to be thinner because it's where I put the most pressure. It's closest to my body. It's easier to push down. By the time I get way out here away from my body, the pressure is not as good. So it'll always be thicker over on this side. Um, and it even our left and right handedness. So you want to constantly be rotating while you're rolling out fondant. If you're rolling at a big, huge amount, it's definitely easier to take this mat and rotate this map like that um, instead of trying to pick this up and rotate it. Just make sure that you don't accidentally knock a bunch of stuff over in the meantime. All right, so that's uh, this is a good thickness for covering a cake, uh, but it's a little bit too thick for what we're doing. So I'm gonna roll it out just a little bit more and catch up on some comments. Um, you're in Kentucky, you love my videos. Thank you, Melinda, I appreciate that. Hey, Ashley, love your hair. Thank you, Joyce. Um, there are three different ways to make ganache. Um, I, do, um, I do a three to one ratio, a two to one ratio, and a one to one ratio, and kind of depending what I'm doing. Three to one ratio is what I um, chill in the fridge and then scoop up and turn into truffles. Two to one ratio is what I usually use for frosting. Uh, sometimes a two and a half to one ratio kind of depends on what I'm making and honestly how hot it is outside in the summer. I tend to go on the stronger closer to the three to one ratio. Um, and then I use the one to one ratio for drips. So personal preference. So you can, you can actually take the ganache and whip it too and create more of a frosting like consistency when you do the two to one ratio. Um, and then I, of course, I make, I make ganache and then I mix it in with extra cream and I make ice cream out of it. Or I'll make ganache and I'll mix it with a thick buttercream and I'll make a ganache flavored buttercream. It's a stronger chocolate flavor that I prefer and like better. Um, but for under fondant, I always like the straight ganache. I feel like it really gives you a better base and then you don't have to worry about the buttercream oozing and squishing out underneath the weight of the fondant, personal preference. Okay, so this is thin enough now. And see, let's see if you can see that. So you can see that it's not super thick, not super thin. We're not gonna have to worry about it ripping or tearing or anything like that. So I'm going to um, just cut this one away for this, put that over there, and cut this away for this. I'm gonna take this excess and I'm going to add it to this pile that I've already put aside. And the reason that I'm doing this before I even work on these is because again, fondant dries out quickly and it's expensive to be fair and you don't wanna waste it. So I'm gonna take care of it as best I can by constantly uh, keeping it wrapped in the plastic. We'll get better results that way. So we will start uh, with our thicker one. So how do you get the fondant to stick to this foil and cardboard circles? Anybody have any ideas? One way to go is uh, piping gel. Piping gel though is also on the expensive side. Hard, it's not necessarily readily available a lot of places. It is great though because it's super sticky, but I have found uh, corn syrup works really good for me. And so that is what I like to use, just a thin amount. This is gonna be messy. Uh, so let's, oh, wrong, wrong one. All right, so I'm going to take this and I have this little bit of corn syrup it's gonna pour on right there. You don't need a lot. And I'm just gonna use my hands. You can use a brush, but I find it easier to wash my hands than to wash a brush. So the top is now covered, and now I wanna do the sides. So kind of the same thing. I'm just gonna pour a little itty bitty bit on, and I'm just gonna take it and rub it all the way around the side of my cake circles. And again, you don't need this to be a thick layer and it does get really messy. Whew. Try not to add too much. Okay. All right, so now everything is nice and sticky and I'm gonna set this right here. I'm actually gonna do the other one right now as well just because my hands are already a mess. Um, better to just do them both at the same time. So again, the top. And then the sides. And um, let's see. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. 
And again, we want these sides to be as flat as possible, so I'm also pressing with my hand to get, try to get a nice sharp corner on this thing. Okay, so set that aside. And I'm gonna wash my hands again, because let's face it, you can never wash your hands enough when you're in the kitchen. Okay. Um, I'm looking for something smaller than my cake circles, but that's like kind of has a little bit of weight to it. So I'm going to use my baking powder container and I'm going to put my circle. Hey guys, I'm filming so shh. I'm going to put my circle on top of it and the kids all just got home from karate. So this is going to be fun. So you want to make sure it's smaller than your cake circle like this one is right here. And we're going to take that fondant and we're going to just put it right on top, nice and centered. And I'm just going to carefully work my way around. Try to get rid of all the ripples. This is just like working on a cake. Now you want to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles in here. So if you do feel an air bubble, go ahead and kind of lift it back up right there. Try to get that air bubble out completely and try to give your, oh, there's a little air bubble right there. All right, and then we want to get some sharper corners. Now it's really hard to work, um, oh my word, my button's not working. It's really hard to work with really small things because they're so light, they want to move around. Uh, so you want to hold the top really good while you're working on the side. But if I use my fingers to hold the top, I'm going to create an indent. So I'm going to use, uh, fondant smoothers. Now you don't want these to be sticky at all. So if you have recently washed yours or if they have any kind of stickiness on them, you want to one, make sure that they're clean. And then two, you can do a light dusting of a uh, powdered sugar cornstarch mixture on here. And that will not super heavy because we don't want a bunch on top of our fondant, but uh, that'll keep these moving nicely without like pulling and gripping on the fondant and creating problems because they're sticky. So, Hey guys, extra fondant. I will have extra fondant later. Yes. And I will give it to you when I do. So I'm just kind of rotating this while I go and see how now I have a sharper corner right here from working these two together. And that is what we're trying to do. And I'm trying not to stay in any one place for too long. I'm trying to turn this as I work on it. All right, I'm getting... And then we're gonna take a nice sharp knife and we're going to run it just underneath that, uh, the cake circle. And this smaller one is actually going to be the top of our Lego peg. All right. So make sure that you're cutting under the cake circle and not like into the cake circle because we don't want a gap between the fondant and the fondant. Okay. So there is our first, cake circle. I accidentally touched a little bit. Try to make sure the edges are nice and smooth. All right, so I put this off to the side. Now this fondant, because we put it on top of that, see how it now has like some of that glossy um, corn syrup in it. I'm actually going to be able to knead that corn syrup into the fondant without it causing too much of a problem. So I'm going to do the next one now. Um, and the bigger these cake circles get, the more difficult it is to get rid of bubbles. So one tip that I have is to kind of bring your fondant in folded like a taco and then put it down center and then let it fall open like that. And then you're able to get rid of a lot of the bubbles from ever even forming. So make sure I like to rotate this. <laughs> this is so light. It's trying to fall off this thing to rotate it, make sure all the bubbles are gone. And then we're going to smooth out the sides. First I do it with my hand and then we're going to use the circle. So for those of us, for those of you who are joining us a little on the late side, I am making a Lego head cake. Um, and so right now we're working on what's going to be the neck and the top of the head. And these are cake circles that I have cut, uh, put together with foil and tape. And now we're covering with a uh, nice layer of yellow fondant. All right, so nice and smooth. We're gonna do the same thing again. 
Make sure you're finding underneath the um, cake circles, not cutting into the cake circles, and rotate and trim right to the bottom. Okay, and now that one's done. So I'll put this one aside as well. Take this. I'm gonna knead these back together and then add it to our other fondant that we pre-kneaded as well. Hey, if you want, you can bring a chair in and you can help me. Go, go bring it, go, no, not one of those chairs. Okay, you, want, you can bring that, that's fine. Just be careful of the cords. Don't bump anything. I think we might get a guest. Hey, are you gonna join in? I think you need to maybe come a little bit more this way. How's that? Okay. What do you think so far? Does that look like a Lego? No, yes. <laughs> okay, Gruff is still your favorite and the Snitch is a close second. Oh, thanks, Gruff was one of my favorites too. He turned out so cute. That's like almost, that's the cake that almost didn't happen too. Cause um, I was like, this is not gonna work but I'm gonna film it just in case it does work. And then it did, he turned out so cute. All right, so now I'm gonna take this fondant that I just kneaded back together and knead it in with this fondant. And we're gonna, I think we might need some more. I'm gonna cut another little bit of fondant out because I'm looking at the cake that we have already frosted and I'm looking at this amount and I'm thinking about rolling it out and I don't, I think it's gonna be just a little bit short, but I would always, oops, oh, can you go pick that up? I just dropped that, can you go pick that up? Thank you. Um, I would always rather, yep, and down. I'd always rather have, I have corn syrup on here. A little bit too much, then a little bit too little, and have to roll it out again. Oh no, let's see, is it safe? Oh good, it's safe. Oh, I forgot something. That's what happens when everybody comes home and interrupts you. Okay, we're going to take a step back. I'm gonna take a little bit of this. We're gonna roll it out because we haven't cut the Lego letters. The whole like branding is part of it. So, Wrap up the extra fondant again. Oh, you guys, I got two hours of sleep the other night and I'm still feeling it. Even though I've like caught up technically. My uncle once told me that to catch up on sleep, you need to like, if you need, if you're missing like six hours in order to catch up on six hours of sleep, you actually need like 12 hours of sleep to make up for it. I don't know if I really believe that, but I'm definitely feeling my two hour night the other night still. Okay, so take the fondant and Roll it out again. You gonna help me roll? Yeah. Oh, cute little hands, that's for sure. Oh, good job. Okay, can I do it now? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so, not too thick, not too thin. I make it look so easy. I sure do. It's my job. All right, so I have this. I have a, I think it's called thick Lego font um, that I have print, I printed off the word Lego. Like this, and about the size that I think will work. So let's hold this up to our little three inch circle and see what we think. All right, so I think that'll be a good size. What do you think? So we're gonna take this now. We're gonna put it on top of this fondant we just rolled out. And I'm gonna grab my little sugar cookie tool. I don't know what this is actually called, this tool. Most people use it for uh, making sure you're, why is this not focusing? Um, most people use it to, come on, make sure that their, uh, their royal icing gets all the way into the corners of their sugar cookies. So that's why I call it that. I don't actually know what it's called. So we're gonna take this. Hi. Um. From NC. NC is North Carolina. Say Whoa. hello. Hello. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hello. take this and I'm gonna just use this and kind of push pin in all around the letters. And that's gonna create our guide. And this is what I do anytime I'm cutting out a shape in fondant. All right and do it on the inside as well. All 
Um, all right, this is a good time to catch up. Uh, you're a good teacher. You wouldn't have thought about the plastic roller with a good one. Great tip. Thank you, Amanda. Um, alcohol. Oh, corn syrup. Good guess, though. That was a good guess. I do use alcohol for sticking fondant together, so it does come into play um, a lot in working with fondant. So that was a good guess. But no, corn syrup is what I use to stick the fondant to the um, foil. All right, so let's catch up on some other questions. Uh, how can people do cakes that big? Subscribe. Um, uh, cakes. Subscribe. I'm, uh, yeah, okay. Subscribe. subscribe. It oh, a scribe. Shelly, yes, that is what this is called. Good call. All right. I love to bake. I love okay. to bake. You love to bake? Who doesn't love to bake? Baking is awesome. All right, so I'm halfway is done watching. with this. Some said, is watching. Yeah, that means a friend of mine is watching. That's Casey. Can you say hi? Hi. There you go. <laughs> well, she just spells it differently. It's pretty fun, huh? All right. So let's see. Um, hi from Alaska. Such a cute helper. That's you. You're the cute helper, bud. All right. Oops. I remember it's better to go outside than inside your guide because it's an easy thing to fix while trimming. But if you go inside your guide, That'll be harder. So I always try to do this along the outer edge. So you can always cut more, can't cut less. So can you see that? Let's try to get closer with the other camera. See if you can see this. Is that a little bit easier to see? So now I'm gonna take um, the sharp knife that we were using earlier to trim off the fondant. And I'm gonna uh, use this to cut the lettering, so. Kind of work in little up and down sawing motions is what I have found works best. And it's basically like, okay, shh, you're so loud. It's basically like playing uh, connect the dots. Both knives. Yeah. Do you like that? I like connect the dots. You like connect the dots? I know you do. What else do you like? And then ABC kind of connect the dots. ABC connect the dots. You like mazes, right? That's what I was thinking of. Yep. You love to do mazes. Okay. So our yeah. L is done. We're going to move on to our E. Okay. Shh. Kind of being loud, bud. A bit too loud. You're too loud. I don't know if too loud is such a thing, but. All right. I'm just doing it loud. Now so notice okay. that it's, as yeah. I'm cutting, it kind yeah. of pulls the fondant. Okay. And you can kind of actually warp your lettering if you're not careful. So don't be afraid to stop and start someplace else and come back from another direction if you feel like it's pulling too much in one way. So I'm going to come in from the E. I'm going to come around the outer edge. But then as it starts to pull, I'm actually going to come back from this side and meet where it stopped and started that way. I feel like I get, uh, I get less warpage that way. So again, kind of the same thing with the center part of the E. I'm going to come from where I've already cut and meet in the middle. So just a personal preference. And then one thing you want to do once a letter is done is you kind of want to go over it without the up and down sawing motion just to make sure that you didn't leave any place connected because that'll cause problems later if you did. Uh, all right, so that's nice and clean. Now, a lot of people like to cut um, like to cut uh, backwards. So flip this this way and cut this way instead. Uh, it's a personal preference. Uh, uh, you can, once I get done with this and I pull this away, I'll show you both sides of the letters and you can decide if you think the bottom's smoother or if you think the top's smoother and you can decide what you would have, uh, what you would have chosen to do. If you know that you always like the bottom, then yes, for sure. Flip the design over and come at it from the other side. But if you like the way the other side looks better, you're going to be glad that you went that way. Hopefully that made sense. It's hard when you're always saying like over, under, left, right, this way, that, because it tends to be confusing. But um, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that made a little sense. All right. So this kind of left a little 
spike right here on this letter. So I'm going to try to just kind of fold that down real fast before I move on because the fresh cut is the easiest to smooth and work with and fix any problems that might have come up. So I'm actually going to um, go a little bit slower on this inner area of the G just because it's so small. It's going to be a little bit trickier. And it's okay if I leave a little bit now because I'm going to be able to kind of smooth that out a little bit later. So just take your time, go slow. If you feel like your knife's too big, um, try, try looking for another tool that you can use. Okay. All right, and our last letter, our O. When something has straight lines or straighter lines, you can always go straight into cutting it like that. Um, you just got to be careful that you don't cut anything you've worked on previously um, and, um, and make sure that you're not accidentally missing a detail. And now see that um, it's still a little bit sharper than I like her, which is why I like doing my other method better, but I just wanted to show you another option. So I'm going to kind of come in here and round those edges that are now a little bit pointy from that style. But again, personal preference. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you choose to do or how you go at it, as long as you are happy with the results. So again, this little O is super narrow. So I'm always working a little slower and a little more careful when I'm working in areas like that. Okay, so I'm gonna use this tool to pull this up. Pull the inside of the G out as well. Pull these outer areas up. And this is when you're going to be able to tell if something didn't get cut all the way, right? There we go. Okay, so this outside of this G area needs to get cut a little bit better. Okay. So, let's look at the um, O. So here is the top of the O and you can see because I just did that slicing it's a little bit smoother and then the back uh, this is why I don't like the back as much it tends to kind of like instead of being a nice straight it always kind of tends to come out a little bit um, but you can kind of fix that by using your hands be careful not to over press this is pretty um, soft movements and then for the inside of the O you can use a tool to help you kind of smooth that out Right, that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna put my O. And I'm actually gonna flip this over and put this, I'm not gonna put it right on this because these little bumps that I created from this tool would cause issues, but I am gonna put it like underneath so I can kind of see and make sure that that's looking okay. All right, I'm gonna work on the G now. It's kind of the same thing. The G is looking a little bit rough. So I'm going to cut like some of that excess away and again, use my fingers really um, softly kind of rub away those edges and try to get a smoother uh, finish to these, to this lettering, but just be gentle. And while you're kind of taking your time, you're also not taking your time because you don't, you want to work on this. What? Yes, you can eat that little itty bitty piece of fondant. You, so look, I'm having some um, bumps right here still from the uh, from where I had marked this letter. So I'm gonna just kind of cut those off a little bit. So you wanna work fairly quickly because the fondant is constantly drying, but you don't want to work uh, so quickly that you cause a problem or make a mistake. So it's kind of a mixture. You can actually just cut one letter at a time if you want and work on one letter at a time. Now the G is obviously the easiest to, um, to destroy because it's the most intricate when all of its curves. So be careful not to rip it or overextend it. So, G. So put that in place. All right, I'm not getting a very sharp 
there we go, back. Okay, so there's the G, now the E, and the L. And these should both go faster. The G is always the um, trickiest letter. So again, any sharp spots, you can kind of trim away, brush away, soften with your fingertips. Um, make sure you're happy with the lettering. All right, and then put it upside down, put it over here. Make sure you're still getting, because notice even the rounded letters like the O and the G, they still have like a, um, a straightness to the back end, right? The back of that letter. Oh, what you doing? Okay, and then finally the L. The L will be nice and quick and easy. It's already pretty smooth. Okay, so these are ready to go. I feel like they're in the right place. How does that look? Be a little closer together. How does that look? What do you think, bud? Does that look good? Yeah. Yeah? You like that? Not yet. Just give me a second, sweetheart. Are you still filming? Yes, I'm still filming. You see all the lights and cameras on? Okay. So, now I have a little bit of clear alcohol and a brush. And this is a brush that I only use for cake decorating. Do not mix your craft brushes and your cake brushes. And I'm just going to paint the back of these letters. And, yes you can, buddy. Okay, make sure that they're spaced really good how you want them. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either um, pick up each letter at a time and put it in place. Um, you can actually stick them to the paper using shortening, um, or you can just eyeball it like I'm gonna do. So I'm going to, I'm gonna eyeball it. So I want this centered, so I'm gonna kind of, I already have a little mark on this side where I had some damage. So I'm gonna hold this across, I'm gonna mark this side a little bit. So now I kinda know where my two halves are. Okay, shush, you guys, calm down. Give myself a little line on, oops, this side. Put that back in place. <laughs> oh, now they're all sticky. Ah, okay. Like this half. Okay. Hold this upside down. Where's my marking? There's my marking. Whoop. All right. Woohoo! That looks pretty good, huh? For eyeballing it. <laughs> All right. I feel like I just won the lottery. So now that they're stuck. Press it on a little bit and again, kind of rub away any areas that maybe you're not happy with. Uh, smooth out any corners and any edges and any dried dust pieces. Got a little bit of a thing in the letters. Okay. All right, now we are ready to take all the fondant and uh, roll it out to put on the cake. So we're almost done. I know that it seems like we haven't very spent very much time on the actual cake itself, but that's because these details are really what make it. The rest is gonna go by super duper fast. Yes, sweetheart. No, I'm still using this fondant. He's reading the comments for me. Uh, from Red Oak, Texas. Welcome. I'm not sure where that is in Texas. I used to live in Richardson near Dallas, and then I also used to live in the Woodlands uh, near Houston. So, but that is all that I have lived in. Okay, so again, remember to clean your surface from all, oh, shh, from all of that work that we just did with all that detailing. Um, there's now a lot of little, like, uh, fondant, um, like, crumbs, I guess is the best word, because as it dries, they get kind of crummy. So, oh, there's a lot of little yellow fondant crumbs everywhere. So I'm gonna quickly make sure that we wipe off the surface because we wouldn't want to roll out the fondant and have it have a bunch of little, even though it's the same color, little like mm -hmm. dust particles within the fondant, if that makes sense. Um, okay, you're such a same teacher, very good at describing what you're doing. You like that because it's uh, you're a more visual learner. You're so welcome, Rocky, and thank you so much. Actually teaching, I love cake decorating, um, but teaching is what I love the most. So this has been a, a really good mixture of both. Um, are you making the cake for someone? 
just for fun. It's an old uh, post on my blog that I thought would be a fun live video. That's all. No, nothing. No birthdays coming up or anything. When's your birthday, bud? October. October. Oh. October 4th. 10-4, good buddy. All right. Okay, so I'm going to cut a little bit more fondant because like I was saying earlier, if I roll this, this actually might be the perfect amount of fondant. It's pretty close. And if I, but if I roll this out and I can tell by rolling it out that it's not quite big enough, then I have to knead it again, add more, roll it out again, and that's not fun. I would rather always have a little bit excess that I roll out a little bit too big and have plenty to work with without feeling like I'm going, i got to stretch this just a little bit more. You know what I mean? Um, because the excess you can always cut off and save and wrap in plastic and put in the bucket and use another time. So I'd always rather have a little more than a little less. I know it's an expensive um, ingredient, but to me it's worth, um, it's worth losing maybe a little bit of it to some chocolate ganache and not having to stress about um, having to re-roll it or having too little. So cut another little bit off of this, knead it and mix it in together. Okay. So we went through almost an entire bucket, <laughs> which I know is not what we're really going to be using, but okay. Are you reading the comments for me? Um, no, no, no extra popping up yet. No extras are popping up. Okay. Um, all right. So again, a little bit of shortening that's going to help knead the fondant. Do you not wear any pants, dude? You're silly. All right, so knead them both together now. Give ourselves a nice big amount. And even as I'm kneading this, I'm getting little like fondant crumbs all over that I'm from like the edges and stuff that tend to get a little dry. And I just brush them away. You just want to keep them off your surface if you can help it. Ah, uh, you have an ant in the woodlands. Nice. You are too funny. Great work. He's too funny or I'm too funny. All right, so I've kneaded more and notice this side is kind of a mess from kneading and this side is smooth from kneading. I'm not going to put this side down so that as I roll it out, I'm not going to have to worry about there being ripples in my fondant. And then when I lay it on the cake later, I know that the side that's on the bottom, because that's going to be the outside, is going to be nice and smooth. So, um, what is this video called? what's this video called? Uh, it's called Lego Head Cake. <laughs> cake decorating tutorial. Yep, live. cake decorating tutorial live. You like it? Is that a good title? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Go, I kind of want to go watch it on the computer. So I can watch okay, it. you can go watch it on my computer. <laughs> yeah, just go to um, just go to Ashley uh, YouTube at Ashley Marie Cakes, and you can find it. Okay. It's okay. He wants to watch it live. He can watch it live. Does my hair keep getting in the video? <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll try to change camera angles, see if that helps. <laughs> I always forget about that. I lean so far over. And then I'm not used to working with my nails. They're still pretty new to me. So make sure you don't like divot your fondant with your nails. So at the beginning, while it's really thick, it's actually kind of hard to roll out. So just stick with it. It will get easier and easier and easier. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you don't roll it out as it gets easier to roll out, it will get easier to accidentally make it too thin because it's hard, 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 too thick, too thick, too thick, and then all of a sudden, easy, 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 ah, too thin. So, um, again, rotate often. And um, <laughs> my camera's having a hard time focusing on the plain yellow, I think. So, rotate often and um, try to keep it a nice, even circle and just keep an eye on the thickness. So my dream, 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 dream. Oh, look, I have an air bubble. Talk to you about how to take care of air bubbles. So using that same tool, you want to try to discover air bubbles before you roll it out too thin or you won't really be able to handle it. Just kind of push the air bubble all as close to one spot as you can get. Stick your needle in there at a tight angle. And as you pull it out, push that away. And by putting it in as an angle, you leave a much smaller hole than if you just stab it from the top. What's wrong, buddy? What is it? What's wrong? Oh, give me a hug. It's okay. It's okay. You can watch me later, okay? 
Or you can go, can you all go watch on the boys' computer downstairs? Yeah, you can go watch on the boys' computer, okay? Or you can watch on the TV downstairs. Or you can sit in here and watch me in person, or you can be in the video. It's up to you. You wanna be in the video? Yeah? Okay. How am I doing? Am I rolling this out good? Yeah? Is it, too, is it thicker in one spot than another? You would tell me, right, if it was too thick in an area? Okay. Yeah, it's getting big, isn't it? in the camera. It can't even fit on the camera. It can't even fit on camera. Well, three. let's see. If we make the camera go out like that, it fits, right? I said on camera three. This camera? Like that? How's that? Is that better? Okay. How's that? Does it fit in the camera now? Yep. Okay. All right. So, what I like when I'm rolling out my fondant is, sorry, this is right now is about a quarter of an inch thick. That's still a little too thick. So we're going to keep rolling it out, but I don't want to go too much thinner than that. And the reason for that is some, um, every cake decorator is a little bit different in what they're comfortable with for their, for their fondant. Personally, I mean, fondant is like Play-Doh, right? If you've ever played with Play-Doh, if you get it really thin and then you try to push it back together, because remember, we're taking something flat and we're rounding it out. And if you try to take something thin and push it back together, it just ripples. And so I like to keep it on the fairly thick side because if you take like a thick, a thick piece of Play-Doh or fondant in this case, and you push it back together, it kind of just gets thicker and goes back together. So there's kind of a sweet spot just under a quarter of an inch where the fondant will still be able to stretch a little bit as it goes down without ripping. And as you press it together, it will kind of go back together and create an easier shape around the cake versus rippling. So personal choice. Um, that's just what I have found has worked best for me. So remember our cake is uh, six inches across and about six inches tall. So six, six, six is about 18 inches. So what we're looking for is to create about an 18 inch circle here. We're getting close. Okay, what is six plus six? Do you remember that? 12. That's right. What's 12 plus six? Rotate it again. Do you know what 12 plus six is? No. You wanna add it on your fingers? do it all right 18. So 18 that's right and so that is what how big we're trying to make this does this look like it's about 18 inches not quite yet huh almost so we're getting close why did you say six 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 because we added six from the side of the cake plus six from the top of the cake that's 12 plus six from the other side of the cake because we want the fondant to go all the way around right when people tell you you don't use math every day they're lying i use math every day all right, whoo! So, I will but, say, rolling out on it is a workout. <laughs> and maybe it's just because I'm so out of shape, but it has always just been, it like, whoo, gets your, gets your arms going, especially since you can't like stop and rest and leave it for later, because this is just drying out as we speak, right? And so you can't let it go too long. All right, so let's check out this thickness. This, oh, maybe not, there we go. So you can see it's definitely less than a quarter of an inch now, but it's not quite like an eighth of an inch. It's kind of a nice in between. And that is what we're working on. So this is stuck to our mat. I'm gonna push this off to the side a little bit. I'm gonna fold the mat up like that. So I have a little bit of space right here. And I'm going to... Yeah. I know. I'm. Okay, hold on a second. All right, I'm gonna put a bowl upside down right here. I'm gonna lift up that cake that we frosted earlier. I'm gonna bring it over here and put that's up. That's one of the things I've been looking at. Don't yeah, I don't want anything that's too tall for underneath my cake, but I also need it narrower than the bottom of the cake. And look, <laughs> All right, so here's the thing about uh, ganache. So see how we have some like sharper corners? All of that is going to show once the fondant goes on. So this is the great thing about chocolate is that I can actually go through and any part that's like sticking up, I can use the warmth of my hand and flatten out. 
So as I turn this, I'm just looking for anywhere that maybe is a little bit sharp, maybe has kind of a divot in it, and I'm just looking to smooth that out. So it just takes a little second to do, and it's really worth it for the final product. So especially they this top edge, so everything is worth it when it's done. When you're eating cake, it's always worth it. Um, this was looking a little sharp to me, hey this there, top kiddos. corner. So I'm trying to Where smooth that out. Um, I got Hi. this mat on Amazon, I believe. Hi. Um, I don't know if it's linked in the blog post. This is actually a pretty old blog post. So I will go and find a link and I will add it to the blog post on my site. I think on my site it's uh, ashlymarie.com forward slash lego dash head dash tutorial maybe. Anyway, you can just search on my site for uh, Lego head cake tutorial and you should be able to no, find it no. and I will update it there. Sure it's okay. Lego head cake yeah, there's a link at the top of tutorial live? that. Yeah, but I'm in the blog post. All right, so now I'm doing the yeah. same thing for the bottom, right? Ooh. We have the same effect down there. We have the same sharp corners. We want to make sure. The other thing that this is actually doing by warming up the ganache a little bit, it's actually making it, the last area I have is right here. I have like a little divot I'm trying to get rid of. It actually yeah. kind of warms up and melts this top layer of the ganache just Ooh. a little bit and it helps Ooh. the fondant stick a little bit better. Okay, I feel like we're pretty even. It is. So I'm gonna wash my hands again. Big fat shocker. I know. You wanna lick my hands? <laughs> That'd be pretty gross, huh? It'd be kind of delicious, but kind of gross. Okay, dry the hands off. And then here is the trick for getting this uh, fondant onto the cake. So it should stick to your mat because of that shortening that we used. So see how it's sticking to the mat? So I'm gonna fold it in half. So I'm getting like a taco again. The taco. The taco again. Do not like to uh, using the top mat. Okay. So. What top mat? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it taco shape like this. And just like when we were putting it on the other thing, I'm going to put it like this first. It's going to touch right there on the cake. And then it will evenly go over the top of my cake as long as my taco's even. Let's see. Even up my taco a little bit. Try not to get any folds in the mat. It's a little easier when you're not trying to talk to the camera at the same time. Okay, so. I think it's easy. You think it's easy? I just have to talk. Try to center it. I just have to talk. You just have to talk? That's all. Okay. It's easy. It's easy just talking. Is it? Just playing and then talking without oops. having to look at the camera. Seems like I moved my mat a little bit. Okay. So then you just start on one side and just peel off the mat. Oop, and we get this nice great surface from the mat. Move that out of the way. And now we're going to immediately start working on this. So try not to get your hands underneath where that chocolate is because then you get chocolate on your hands while you're trying to spread this out. So I'm going to start at the top. Oh, oh, there's chocolate on my hands. Good thing I saw that, huh? Oh, thanks, bud. Okay. Oh, you're doing great. All right, so make sure there's no air bubbles and you want to work your way evenly across. What you don't want to do is work one side perfectly smooth and then try to get all the way to the back because what that's going to do is push all the fun to the back and then you'll have a huge ripple by the time you get over here. So you want to constantly be turning and working your way around the cake, getting it to smooth down. And oh, be careful, don't push it off the thing. Um, and, and we're trying to get those ripples kind of pushed together. It also, oh, air bubble. Yep. Oh, don't, don't, don't fingerprint it. <laughs> we don't want little fingerprints in there. And by working just like half an inch at a time, working our way down, we're going to help this stay nice and smooth. And we're going to, oh, watch out, honey, you're pushing the cake off the thing. Can you let me do this for just a second? And then I'll, I'll show you something you can help me with. Is that okay? I know you really want to eat some. And look, you can see my nail marks right here. We're going to get the fondant smoothers and hopefully we can work that out. Yeah, yep. You can all see those. Yeah, you can all see those. Yeah. 
So hopefully now you can kind of see what I was talking about when I was saying it kind of like pushes itself back together. What we don't want to create is a ripple that um, is so big that it then cre like creates a wrinkle within this. So we're constantly kind of, oh, don't pull it away too far. We're constantly kind of pulling and smoothing, pulling and smoothing, pulling and smoothing. And again, just work your way down about half an inch at a time and constantly, uh, constantly rotate your cake around. All right, I think we're all the way to the bottom now. And now, now comes the tricky part with this cake and any like ball shaped cake is the sides, the top and the sides are easy to do. Getting this bottom to now come back down inside. Oh, more chocolate. To come back down inside without these ripples getting deeper and turning into a problem is always a little bit fun. So what I like to do is I'm gonna bring this plastic mat back. And I'm actually going to flip the cake upside down. Whoop really quickly pull all that together because now it's going to have a nice it's still going to be smooth on the surface and I'm going to work the other direction coming up trying to work these ripples out right without causing problems oh be careful I'm trying to work one ripple at a time hmm. all right and if you do get a little wrinkle try to immediately kind of smooth it out yep I know I got a little bit of a wrinkle there, huh? But oftentimes, if you are careful, you can kind of, like I was talking about earlier, push that fondant back into itself and get rid of a lot of those ripples. Um, Let's try to put this better where you can see it a little it bit better. It looks like, like a, a little lettuce thing. Yep. So again, be kind of pull away and then push together. Pull away and push together. Pull away and push together. Yep, it's kind of the motto. So, you can what's a motto? I don't know. What's a motto with you? <laughs> what is that from? It's from the Lion King. Am I hilarious or what? Hmm. This is when you say, "Mom, you're so funny." Hmm. What? I'm getting a growl. I don't deserve a growl. I deserve a mom. You're so funny. That was a dark laugh. That was a low laugh. That was a dark laugh? What's a dark laugh? I don't even I know mean, what that I mean, is. I mean, a kind of low voice. A low voice laugh? Yeah, it seemed kind of like a grunt to me. <laughs> oh, wait, it, has, almost, it does sound like a grunt to me. It does sound like a grunt. I'm going to start. Now, I'm not being careful at all. I'm cutting away cutting. a big bunch of this just so I can work a little bit smoother. Make sure that you're, if you do this, that you don't cut. No, you cannot eat that. I'm going to save it for another cake. Make sure that you don't um, cut away too low. Right? I'm almost all the way around. Oh, no, I got a rip. Okay, well, that's the back of the cake. We now have the back of the cake. Ooh, okay, almost to the end. Almost to the end. Okay, so now. Can we cut a, cut off a little excess? Yes, I will. You will have plenty to eat. I promise. All right. So now I'm gonna take my fondant smoother. Take both fondant smoothers. Why did someone say no? And I'm gonna bring all this up. And that is going to help us round this and smooth this. And it will be amazing how many of those little wrinkles that we thought were a problem won't actually be a problem once we get this taken care of. Okay. So now I'm going to take our sharp knife again. I'm going to find the base. I'm going to come over here. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to cut and way. All right. And look how much of those wrinkles are actually were high enough up that they're getting completely cut off. Okay, so this has enough chocolate in it that I'm not going to try to save this, but yum, those yum. initial stuff that I cut off, 
that initial wrinkle didn't have very much chocolate in it, so I'll be able to save yep. that. Okay, mm -hmm. this you need to share with your sister, okay? All right, so go back in here, make sure that it's nice and even. All right, so what do you think, right? There's a couple of wrinkles, but overall, not bad. All right, okay, so now I'm gonna try to get that sharper angle from the bottom of a Lego head real fast. Uh, right up to, right up to the, that bottom, right? All right. Yes, that's extra fondant. Can you please say sorry to your brother for making him cry? Sorry. That was not very nice. All right, I'm going to go one more, like, cleaning and cut off. Brooklet Scar, that was to share. That's for both of you to share. You may not just take it off. All right. All right, so our bottom is now nice and clean. Just take your half and, and leave him his half, okay? All right, so... Now we have our neck piece that we did from earlier. And I'm going Looks to, like only a bit of yeah. What we want to do is we want to stick it right onto there. But again, it's not necessarily going to stick really great onto that cardboard. So you have a couple different options. Um, you can, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a paper towel with a little bit of water on it and try to clean up. <coughs> Just a little bit of where this chocolate got onto the fondant a little bit. I don't usually like to put water on fondant because it kind of changes uh, changes the end result. It's not going to be quite smooth, but there, a little bit of the chocolate kind of, I just don't want it to show up on the neck. Just a little cleanup. There we go. That looks a little cleaner. Okay, so. Um, you can either put a little bit of the frosting on here to stick them together. You can put a little bit of the corn syrup on it to stick them together, uh, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Mm -hmm. um, and let's so see, that was full. it's corn syrup. I didn't know and yes, I, I just totally stuck dripping. my finger in that corn syrup. Okay. All right, and then we wanna put it right here. All right. And you can see now why you kind of want that outer edge to be um, nice and sharp. All right, okay. So now it's time to flip. So wash my hand first because I have corn syrup all over it. Dry my hands, and we're going to flip. Whoop! Mm -hmm. Flipped. Okay, so now I'm going to use my fondant smoothers and round this back off again. Let's move this bowl. Let's move this mat. Let's do a little bit of cleaning real fast. Let's get. Because I'm pretty sure I can like kind of start from. Yeah. I'm gonna get the cake plate that I'm going to use for this cake and put this right onto here, centered. All right. Get the mat out of the way. Ooh. All right, I like to use uh, shelf turntables when I'm using cake plates because then I can still work and turn without um, without it being on my cake cutting turntable. Okay, make sure this is centered. All right, and now doesn't look so good. Doesn't look so Oh, all right. So it looks like I have a little bit of an air bubble right here. Can you see that? I know. So I'm gonna, oops. Oh. So again, because it was so flat for so long on this side, it's just gonna need a little bit of reshaping. So I'm just turning as I'm working this. And of course, it's having a hard time <laughs> focusing because I want to get rid of that sharp edge that it created from sitting on there for so long. All right, so it looks like I have an air bubble right here. So that effect that we had talked about earlier, I'm going to be putting a, a cake circle right here on top. So I'm going to come in here at like this angle 
trying to come in from over where the cake will be. Try to get that bubble out that way and then smooth it up. All right. So what do you think, bud? Is it looking good? All right, and now it's time to add, now it's time to add our top thing. So same thing, I'm gonna use some corn syrup, put it right on the bottom of my cake circle, and then I'm going to put this um, right on top. I'm actually gonna first, I'm gonna pick what's gonna be the front of my cake, what's gonna be the back of my cake. I think that might be the front. That's the front. So that I make sure that the Lego says Lego facing the right way. All right, so now I have know where my front is going to be. And I want to put that right there. How's that look? Does that look centered? Yep. Yep. Okay. And push that down. Okay. So, what do you think so far? All right. That look pretty good. So, what is left? That is a Lego head. You can tell it's a Lego head, right? Yep. Anything else? Anything else we need to add to it, buddy? Before you said Lego, mm -hmm. I didn't know it was Lego. You didn't know it was Lego. Yeah. What? What else do I need to add to finish it up? His face. His what? Face. His face. What f expression do you think he should make? Please copy this paper now. <laughs> do you like that expression? No, I probably think he should be. Is that expression okay for me to use for the face? Here, sit up really big so they can see you and show you show them what, what expression you think that is. Okay, I'm gonna choose my own expression. No, really? You wanna choose your own expression? Mm. Mm. I'm kind of confused. Mm. Mm. That's a good expression, bud. Mm. Can I stick with that expression because I already printed it off? Mm. Would that be okay? Okay, no. needing that other fondant no. and no. putting it in plastic really fast so we can move forward. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning so that we have room to paint. Please take the off. Yeah, trying to clean this up so I got a little bit of room. Oh, okay. Brush. Wiped. Are you still making expressions? Wiped on the counter. All right. I'm going to move this camera down. So you can get a better view of the face as I'm working on it. You'll also be able to see. Let's see. How's that? Does that look good? Okay. You'll also be able to see my messy refrigerator. So, okay, so. What messy refrigerator? What messy refrigerator? The only messy refrigerator. So for the face, we have a couple different options, um, uh, and that one, you have a couple different options in the expression that you want to make. So this is the expression I did last time, so I just printed this off again because I like it, because it has expression and it's a little bit different. Um, you can either roll out black fondant and cut it and place it on the face, but because Lego heads themselves are actually, well they're like airbrushed permanently on, um, but I wanted to just paint it on because I felt like that would look a little bit more authentic, a little bit better. So I have my soft gel paste in black um, and I have a little bit of cooking alcohol here and I'm gonna add, ooh, what's that? Do that face? Yes, this face. That Angry Bird face? Yes. Is that Angry Bird Hulk? Yes. Angry Bird Hulk. Why don't we make an Angry Bird Hulk cake? What do you think? Sure, sure. Okay. All right, so I just have a couple drops of the alcohol in here, and I'm adding Can you uh, some of this black dye to it, and I'm going to stir them together. And then this makes it more liquidy, so I can paint with it. What you want to make sure is that you don't get it too thin. Uh, you can always add... Uh, more alcohol, it's hard to add less, which is why I only like to start with a little bit. Okay. And even though his eyebrows are technically brown, I'm still just going to go with uh, black. I'm painting, cleaning off the back end. Brown. Yep. His eyebrows are black. His eyebrows? Oh, you think that's black? I thought that was a really dark brown. That okay, cleaning off the back end of this, so if I touch it with my hand, I don't get it all over. Definitely brown. Yeah. All right, so. 
in here. This a beard, a beard. is going to be the front of my cake. I'm right here. Stick with gin hair. <laughs> so, do you think I got the size right, bud? I think I got the size pretty good. What do you think? Mm, you got the size pretty good. Did I get the size? I think I got the size pretty good. Mm. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is mark his. Yep. Is kind of mark this a little bit. His chin head. Oh, I put, my, chin. I put my pin down on accident. So, I don't want to like destroy my face, right? That we just worked so hard to make. So, face. this face. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually the going to face. Yep, just put a little dot right in the middle of his eyes and I'm just going to paint around it. If that makes sense. Kind of same thing with the eyebrow. I'm going to put a little dot here and up in the like where the corner is. So these are just really loose guides. You can just totally eyeball it, but I like to have a little bit of something on the cake. So I'm going to mark the corner of his mouth, this corner, and then over here, and I'm going to eyeball the rest. So hey, can you move? Can I, can I be on that side for while I'm painting on the face? Is that okay? Sure. Thanks. Okay, so. I won't. Okay, so. Well, now I have the microphone face. Brush in here. Yep. All right. Which camera do you say is best looking at you? What camera is best for looking at me? Camera number one. Which camera number one? It's the one right there that you can see my hair in. I mean, looking at the face. Oh, looking at the Lego face? I think the one that it's on, camera number uh, three. I kind of want to move camera kind of number three so it's directly looking at it. Like this? Well, that's just hard to paint when it's directly looking at that. Can't you remove the camera? Well, then I'd be in the way of the camera, though, right? you got to remember where my body is, where my arms are, too. Huh. Right? That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. All right. <clears throat> Ugh. Sorry, I tend to be slow. Because I tend to shake. I have the world's worst handwriting, so. Art, I can do. Handwriting, I'm terrible at. But it's because with art, I take my time. And with handwriting, I don't. <laughs> oh, my hair's in the way. Sorry. you got to tell me when my hair's in the way like that, bud. Mom, can I switch to camera A? So it would just be frozen and be surprised when it's all done? Oh, well there's not really, there's not a camera eight. Okay, so, whoo, first idea. There's a camera eight. There is a camera um, eight. Coda, you want to get some grub? Oh, ha 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 Lion King quote. I gotcha. I'm with it. I'm hip. That's I'm cool. That's camera, camera eight. I know, but there isn't, I don't have eight cameras. I only have three. The program just allows me to have more cameras. Yeah, camera A is where everything's frozen. Well, no, camera A is showing you what's going on right now. So it's actually not frozen. It's like what's happening. No, I'm pretty sure it's frozen. It's definitely frozen. Is it? Okay. So I now is a good time for me to try to catch up on comments. So I know I have missed a lot. I knew this cake would take a while, so I was trying to go a little bit fast um, so that I didn't like, take too much time away from everybody's lives. So if you have a question that didn't get answered, now is a great time to ask it. Don't bump me. Okay? No. Yeah, you're not? It's chair. You're shaking the chair? Okay. Well, the chair might be shaking the ground, ground which might be shaking you. That might be. What do you think? Do those look even? Yeah? Kinda. Kinda? It looks like one brick is just a bit lower than the other eye. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it definitely okay. looks like it definitely is lower than another eye. And dance. Oh, nice eyebrow. Thank you. <laughs> I like his eyebrow too. I love oh, eyebrows. Now, eyebrows now are in the way. Your hair's in the way. Is my hair it's in the way? Oh, it's okay. focus. It was focused on. Oh, thanks for telling me. Oh, phew. I mean, because who doesn't want to see more of my hair? But come on. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know, bud. 
does see the dots in his eyebrows. I know, but that's because you're looking at it super close. People further away won't notice. Okay, what do you oh, think? Oh yeah, like in the camel, people won't notice. Yeah. When they're actually making it, people will notice. Yeah, people won't really notice what you're seeing because you're so close to it. They'll only notice it when they're actually making the cake. All right, round it a little bit. Does that look better? Do you not like using, do you not like rolling using the top mat? Um, I I don't have a top mat, so I don't know. What, I've never used a top I, I mat for rolling. I already read that. Your hand is not good either, awesome. and arthritis doesn't I help. I love it, but my hand writing isn't good either. All right. I'll just. Yeah. Do you think my does do you, help? Do you like I'll mommy's just... arthritis? Do you think mommy has bad handwriting? Yes. Um, yes. Like terrible no, handwriting, huh? Probably not. I like the eyebrow. You like the eyebrow? Oh, I'm so glad you approve. Yeah, mommy has terrible handwriting. No, okay, don't bump me. <laughs> One eyebrow is definitely lower than the other. Yeah, it is in the picture too. See. That understands why this eye is high, high, lower or higher than that eye. Yeah. And this understands why this eye is lower than the other eye. <laughs> okay. Look at the ones. Did my hair get in the way again for a second? Yes. Yeah. Yes, in the way. But it's not my focused on your hair. Okay, as long as it's not focused on my hair, we're okay. Okay, I'll tell you when it's focused. You can okay. move your hair back for a How's that? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is hard work. <laughs> I can't want to see. I can't want to switch the camera one to see. To make it see their face like. Uh. You want to switch the camera one? You can switch the camera one. There you go. Uh, this is hard work. <laughs> like that? You want to yeah. see my face? Yeah, that is a face. So she's like, like, okay, eh. we're back to camera three. All right, we're almost done. We just have our mouth to do. Yep. Okay. But we also have his chin hair to do. I wasn't going to do the chin hair. <laughs> I kind of want to see the chin hair. Well, it's not chin hair. It's like the chin mark from the smile. But um, it's such a light brown. I don't think it would look good in black. And I only have black dye. Mm. So is that okay if we don't do the chin mark? Okay. Is that all right? If you make this look good again, then get brown dye before you actually start making. Yeah. Something. We can. I can go find some brown maybe. If you really, really want. You don't have to. Okay. Whew. Got his little thing you done. Look like if you I actually... keep moving the cake not out of the way to annoy you guys, but just to get a better angle for my hand. Um, now it's facing me. Now it's facing you, that's right. Um, and still looking at that better angle at it when it's facing me. Well, it's, a, it's about getting the angle for my hand holding the brush a certain way. Oh. It's the angle of your head because it is getting in the way all the time. Yeah, because my hair is getting in the way? Yeah. Nope, it's not about my hair. It's about my hand and the angle of my wrist and my elbow. Don't bump me. It's still not focused. It's still not focused on my hair? Yep. Oh, good. It's kind of focused on, your, on the hand and the leg or head. It's just focused on your hand and the leg or head. Oh, good. You, How's that? If you move your head to right there and just focus on that. But you can move your head back like where you walk because you still don't want to focus on How's that? Mm. What do you think? Oh, okay. You can put the camera angle back. I can't. I can't want to turn it all around so okay. that people can see. So they can see all the sides. Oh, all right. Camera Let's move you over now. Two. Camera two. Camera two, you want to spin that one too? Yes. Like that. The Lego. How's that? The G just looks uh, like a C. The G looks like a C? Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> because okay. People can't even. Stop. So, here, oh, <laughs> I've turned it the wrong way. There. Oh! <laughs> Did you oh. your face? <laughs> it slid off 
the cake plate and then I touched the face when I was catching it. <laughs> oh, black dye is never going to come off. <laughs> I'm going to have this black dye on my hand for days now. Oh. <laughs> well, you guys saw it for like two seconds. All right, I'm going to try with some clear alcohol to clean this up a little bit, but I'm afraid it's just going to spread it. <laughs> now he has that chin mark that you wanted. <laughs> Are you happy? I'm kind of not happy that I was in an accident bail mill. An accident. accident. I know, so much for me getting more pictures. <laughs> oh. All right, well, maybe I'll paint the face on the other side of the cake. Why? So I can get some pictures. Well, it'll be a two-headed cake then. A two-headed cake. Er, yep. Yeah. A lot of Lego faces are two-headed, right? Yeah. You're the Lego expert. Would that be okay? For him to have two face sides. I kind of want the both face sides to okay. be different, like an actual Lego. <sighs> Try not to touch it with my messy hand. Bam! Kind of fixed it. Now he's got a little chin shadow. What do you think? All right, so like that is how fast and easy it is to make a Lego head cake. I have made this for both of my sons, my middle son's uh, birthday parties in the past. Um, this little guy, we did the full Lego Batman cake, of course, a couple years ago. Uh, but this is super simple to put together, and it's nice and different from, like, traditional easy Lego cakes, which are just, like, rectangular cakes. I feel like this isn't that much harder than making a rectangular cake and covering it in fondant. In fact, I think it's easier to cover round cakes with fondant than rectangular cakes, but just my personal preference. Um, so this would be my go-to for an easy Lego birthday cake, for sure. So, whoo! Ah! Put that down, and I uh, and that is it. That is this cake tutorial. So I'm going to take a little bit of time. You want to switch to this camera? I'm going to take a little time, and I'm going to stay on. And whoa, his poor little beard. Uh, and answer some questions. His poor little beard. And ask answer some questions. Um, but that's oh wrong camera. But that's it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part. I'm going to uh, scroll back through and answer any questions that I might have missed while I was making the cake. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like on Facebook. You subscribe on YouTube. Click, click the little um, uh, bell for notifications so you don't miss. I will be, traditionally, I'll be live on Tuesdays. At, oh, shh, thank you. Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So the exact time is today, but Tuesdays instead of Wednesdays. Um, and I'm working on my calendar for the year, and I should have edited style, full cooking show, Facebook style videos up starting next week again, finally. So yay. Super excited to get back to a normal schedule. I have so many videos that I've already made and created. I'm just editing and excited to get them out for you that you're not going to want to miss. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and yeah. If you did not get a question answered and you want to make sure that you do, uh, go ahead and answer and I will play catch up for the next couple of minutes. All right, so uh, that was a close one. Yep, it sure was. Okay. Sure. And tomorrow I'm supposed to be filming more videos, so that's going to be fun. Uh, Rocky, you love it. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, you love it. Mandy, thank you. Uh, would love to watch you do... Uh, standing minion with the goggles. I actually did a sitting minion a couple years ago. We did a... Uh, from the Minion movie when, is it Kevin? Yes, Kevin. When he grows huge and he smashes Scarlet's castle. So I made a Minion cake. It was about this big for your... Please do as Paul to Scarlet. For your fifth birthday party? Your fifth birthday party. No, my fifth birthday party was Lego Batman. I thought that was sixth. Anyway, for his birthday party before Lego Batman. Um, and, but he's sitting, because his little, let's face it, those little legs are just really, really short. So he's sitting on top of the rubble from the castle, and he was super cute to do, and had the whole goggles and all of that stuff. So that is on my YouTube channel. Um, you'd love to see me do sugar cookies. Nancy, I, um, I did sugar cookies. Um, 
not last December, but the December before that. So on my YouTube channel, uh, December of 2017, I did a full video on not only my sugar cookie recipe, but also tips and tricks for different types of frosting techniques. That was super fun to do. You love the interaction between mom and son. Well, thank you very much, huh? Thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. You're kind of hidden down there. You're like a little shorty. Uh, he's so cute. Yes, he is, and he knows it. Such a great mom. Thank you. Uh, Letty, you use vodka? That's exactly what I use. You can use clear vanilla. Uh, you can use vodka. You could use anything that's clear, like, yep. Uh, almond extract is another really good one to use. Um, Serenity Dallas. Uh, how big is your mat, and is it the mat? I believe that is what it's called, and it came with two. I'll have to look through my purchase orders, but... I want to say it's like 34 by 34, maybe. Um, I would never go smaller than this. Um, you do have to be careful, though. It wrinkles easily, so be careful with how you store it. Because once it gets like a wrinkle in it, then that wrinkle will obviously get moved onto the fondant and can cause some problems. So this one got really wrinkled because it got smashed underneath some plates. And so what I did with it is I actually unrolled it. Uh, I put towels un under it and over it, and I ironed it to smooth it out, and that actually worked pretty good. Uh, you're too funny. Great work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nancy, yes. What kind of alcohol? I prefer to use vodka, low shelf, super cheap. I've had the same bottle for years and years and years. You don't need to use much. I actually use less vodka than I do like vanilla. So in the cake. Ashley, you're an excellent teacher. Thank you so much. I think I got that one already. Ashley, what part of Texas? Uh, I like your program. You've been following me for a couple weeks or a month and you bake all the time. Awesome, Walter. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, and I, I like my setup too. It took a long time to put together, but I'm really happy with it and how smooth it works. You make it look so easy. How long have you been making cakes like the Lego head? I started cake decorating. <laughs> I started cake decorating when my third was born, and he's about to turn 14. So 13 and a half years is how long I've been cake decorating. Um, I started cake carving when my fourth was born. And she's 12, so about 12 years since I've like been doing more elaborate cakes and cake carving and stuff like that. Um, uh, I can do cakes that big. I'm all corn syrup, cake carrot, love my hair, blah, blah, blah. Uh, probably cooking guide to taste it, blah, blah, blah. What brand of plastic wrap do I use? Costco. Love theirs, the Kirkland brand. Um, you love your hard work. Thank you for sharing. You are so welcome, Nancy. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think I'm all cut up on the comments over. Oops, so I slid the whole thing up over there. Uh, you think you still think I did an outstanding job, even with the mistake at the end. Thank you so much, Rocky. Okay, can I catch up on these now? I, I, I was just looking at the okay. comments. Okay, all right, so over here on Facebook now, loving the hair, thank you so much. Springtown, Texas. Uh, Sandra Hutchin from uh, Alabama. Hi, hi, hi. Monterey, Mexico, very nice, Lorena. Uh, Latanya, first time from Indiana. You guys have some really cool city names, I have to say. Judy, hi, thanks again for watching. Easter's close, do you do your hair pink? I have done my hair pink. I did rose gold uh, two years ago. Uh, I felt like my skin is rose gold, so my hair and skin just kind of all matched together. So I wasn't necessarily a huge fan, but I got a ton of compliments on it. People liked it. Uh, this time around, because we bleached it, we have to bleach it a lot more to go with the blues and the purples, because my hair is naturally black, that like way darker than his, uh, than we do for the pinks. So I will probably stick with blues for one more round. And then uh, because the, it's so bleached and light, in fact, it's so strong. I don't really feel like it's, I need to dye it yet but this is just when we had it scheduled and it's hard to get in with my person, so I don't know. Um, but I'll probably go with pink for the summer when I'm tanner. I feel like I can get away with the pinks a little easier when I'm not quite so pasty pale. Yes. Um, how much is that chocolate cake? That chocolate cake was cut off for this to give it the right height. Do you want to eat that chocolate cake? Yes. You can. Um, do I have lash extensions? You bet I do. Um, I actually have really naturally long eyelashes, but when it comes to video, they just don't show up very good. Uh, and I tend to look like a cancer patient, so I definitely use lash extensions. And I think it's easier to just get them done every three weeks than to do like the whole glue and mess with all that. So, but I did the glue ones for years. Um, I'm really happy that I switched to these though. Um, what are you doing with this cake? Eating it. The ganache is so shiny. Good ganache should be. I uh, can't see the front. Kimber, oh my word, one of my dearest, dearest friends from Texas. Kimber, I wonder if you're still watching. Hi. 
uh, remind, watching this reminds me of the stress and the buttercream fondant mess you left in your kitchen when you were doing your brother's cake and then your sister's. Your fiance now wants a Batman Riddler cake and your sister wants Harry Potter. Uh, well, for Harry Potter, I have done a snitch cake and I have a full snitch cake video tutorial. So that's a fun one. And I would say he's, the snitch is pretty easy to make. I've been meaning to do a Harry Potter hat cake. So maybe I'll do that this summer. Um, and Batman Riddler cake. I do have the Lego Batman cake up or I have my spider, uh, my, I have my, um, my Superman versus Batman cake. And that has the Superman logo on the outside and it has the Batman carved from another cake on the inside. So when you slice it open, you could see Batman. You could do uh, green on the outside with a Riddler logo with a question mark on the outside. And then when you cut it open, you could have the Batman inside. So that could be a good option for that one. Uh, Corey, hi, so good to see you. It looks perfect. Thank you, Margaret, looks great. Thank you so much, Margaret. You are a great fan. I appreciate it so much. Uh, you've never been good at working with big pieces of fondant. It cracks and it sticks. Yes, a bad quality fondant is really a pain. You tend to get that elephanty stuff. Also taking too much time will cause like that elephant skin to develop. So you definitely wanna work quickly with, but not working too quickly, rolling it out thin, but not too thin. So it does take some practice and it definitely takes some playing with uh, the brand of fondant that you're working with. So don't give up. Uh, just try a couple different techniques. If you're working with a dry fondant, try adding in some more shortening and seeing if that helps. Uh, if it's cracking, try not rolling it out quite so thin. See if that helps. Uh, don't work with the cornstarch powdered sugar mixture because that just dries it up more. Work with the shortening on the surface of your mat and see if that helps. So those would be my first tips when I hear that it's uh, cracking. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, Grace, sorry. Uh, so it's Grace, how do you store them once the container's opened? I actually have, um, so this, these set of nice ones actually seal really, really good. So I'm gonna take this one that I just used, I'm actually gonna wrap, for, for constant in and out use, I just wrapped it once, and now that I'm gonna put it away for a while, I'm actually gonna wrap it another time. So, oh, just opened up a new plastic wrap, so it's a little bit being a little difficult. Wrap it one more time. Put it back in this same container and shut it really good. And then I keep, I, I have those 12 gallon buckets from Costco with the closing lids and I keep uh, 16 of these in one of those. But honestly, this is this is a really good bucket and keeps it sealed really well. Some of the other brands don't have quite a good of buckets uh, to seal it, and so that can cause problems. So then I would wrap it in plastic at least twice, put it in a Ziploc bag, try to you know suck and pinch all the air out of it, and then put it in another Ziploc bag. The more layers you can give that, if you don't have a really good container like this, the better chance you'll have of it lasting longer. Um, what is fondant for, Sheila? It's for this, getting this smooth out, oops, wrong angle. It's for getting this smooth outside edge. It's like plate on your cake, except that it's edible. Uh, and it's what helps give these nice clean surfaces versus buttercream. So that's what that is. And I really like working with it a lot. Uh, the clear mat, I think it answered it. I will put, I as, as as soon as I turn this off, I'll go over to my Amazon and I will search for my orders, find that, and put a link here um, in this. Uh, you're a baker at work. Awesome, Margaret, I didn't know that. Uh, you're always telling people that you're training that <laughs> the weather outside has a lot to do with baking. It sure does. Baking is chemistry, like for sure. I, I, um, I, I always liked math, but I was never really into the sciences, and now I'm like a scientist for a living, basically, as a baker. <laughs> Uh, Griff's your favorite, yes, to make it look so easy. Thank you, Farrah, I appreciate that. Hi from North Carolina, scribe. Yes, Shelly, that's what that tool was called. Uh, hello from Ronaldo Beach, California. Oh, I would love to be at the beach right now. I'm going to the Oregon coast for spring break, though. I'm super excited about that. You haven't watched me in a while, Jenny. Thanks for joining us again. I did take a long break, but I am back now. Uh, cut and paste is what you called it. You've been a decorator for 11 years. You never got to work with fondant. Oh, Charlene, fondant's the best. It's so much fun. There's so many things that you can do with it. I love it. Is there like a Lego fondant cutter you could buy? Probably. Um, I, I already have buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of tools and toys, but at the end of the day, um, I often use that technique of hand cutting because uh, then I can make it any size I want. I don't have to be limited to whatever size the cutter is. Uh, then I can, I did the same technique. I do the same technique with all, 
honestly a lot of cakes because then I can really make the detail the exact size and shape that I want. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain, but honestly, I feel like it's worth it. Um, and it's just a lot more flexibility than sticking with one cookie cutter that's one size and then takes up a lot of room in my closet that, and that's only for a project I only do like once every 10 years, right? So I tend to hand cut most things. Um, I'm making the cake for someone. Nope, just for you guys. I'm making it for you guys. So yes, yes, I am. <laughs> um, I know, isn't it funny that they want to like go and watch me live on the computer instead of watch me in here? They're so weird. Uh, looks awesome. Your hand is not good either. Arthritis doesn't help. I have a steady hand. Thank you, Margaret. My mom actually is a hand painter. Like that's what she did for a living. My dad sold hand painted girls hair barrettes to children's stores around the country when I was younger. My mom was like the first painter and the main painter. And it's funny because she shakes like this. She shakes, she shakes, she shakes, she shakes. And then the second the brush touches, she's totally smooth. It's so funny watching her. Um, she's amazing. She actually has really good handwriting too. Oh, uh, my son's quite the helper. Yes, he is. <laughs> you just learned something new. Thank you. You're so wonderful. You're so welcome, Charlene. Oh, wow. Is that a cake? John, yes. This is my, ooh. Oh, <laughs> this is the Lego head cake. Um, I was going to cut it open for you guys, but I kind of also wanted to take some new pictures because my old pictures are kind of nasty. So I think I'm going to take pictures sorry and put him up on the blog so I will not be cutting him right now but I will cut him and I will put pictures of him cut on the blog for you to see um all right so I think I am all cut up with all the questions how oh here's one from Peggy how long does a typical take cake take uh so this one took I don't know how long we've been going um this one's been two hours honestly if I wasn't uh talking and explaining and if I didn't necessarily have the kids right here I could probably get this cake done in about an hour and 15 minutes not including the baking time right I'd bake ahead of time um uh, maybe even close to an hour this is actually a pretty fast cake when you're not stopping to explain it um my snitch cake is another one. I think it took me about three hours to do it live, but when I'm doing it not live, it really only takes like an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes to make. But like my tomatoa cake, because I had to custom build the cake stand and because it was the week of Thanksgiving, so I was making a bunch of other stuff, he took, and because of direct dry time, make the stand, let it dry, work on the stand, let it dry, try something else, let it dry. You know, like there were so many aspects of him. That cake took about seven days to make, but like, if I took all the days that I worked on him and put him in one, it wouldn't like, it's not like it took seven days straight, but honestly, I don't really track my time making my like elaborate cakes because honestly, I don't really want to know. <laughs> uh, so the Batman cake, the standing Lego Batman cake that I made for my son's birthday, uh, like two years ago, I want to say that one i like pulled an all-nighter and worked on it all night i want to say that one took because it was the first time doing that type of structure i uh, including the structure but not the baking so including building the structure carving the cake covering with fondant or covering with ganache covering with fondant and then adding all the details i want to say that one probably took about 14 hours um that was totally worth it so, I mean, you get out of a cake what you put into it. Uh, it depends on how detail oriented you are. The more, uh, this is a super simple cake, so it doesn't take that long. Something like, like the next, if I was gonna make another standing uh, Lego cake again, it would actually go much faster because I've done it before and I learn from that one. Like this Lego head cake, this is like the third time I've made it. So it's much faster every time you make something. I don't really love repeating cakes though. Um, so ne don't necessarily get the benefit from that, but. Uh, anyway, hopefully that answered your questions. Uh, June, do you not like r rolling with the top mat? I don't, I don't know what you mean by rolling with the top mat. Um, I've only, I only ever use one mat when rolling out fondant. Uh, I do like two sheets of parchment paper when I'm rolling out cookie dough and I really like that technique, but that's much smaller with fondant. I don't know, I've just never done it. I, I think it would probably annoy me because the mat annoys me enough with how much in the way it is. Uh, I haven't tried it. Uh, your mat has two pieces. Yeah, mine came with two pieces. I always just thought they were for when one got destroyed. <laughs> I never, honestly, it never really occurred to me that it was a top mat because uh, I've never used it that way. That's a good question. I will have to try that sometime and let you know what I think. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, we are all done. It has been a really long live. Uh, next week, 
it will be a much shorter live because it'll be back to a normal recipe instead of a cake. If you guys enjoy the cakes, I can throw in a cake like every month. Um, if you prefer to stick with recipes, we can stick with recipes. Just leave me notes in the comments and let me know what your preferences would be. So thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like the page, like the watch page, whichever platform you're on, uh, so you don't miss getting notifications. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great night and a great weekend. All right, I'm gonna start turning everything off. Have a nice day. Oh, this takes.